You ever feel like you're just living in an airport? Well, you know, for many lately, it really is like they're living at an airport. For a long time, thousands of people stranded again this past weekend. Major international airports looking more like the huddling masses you might find at Ellis Island. So how do you fix that? With us now is Tom Parsons. Tom is the CEO of BestFares.com and Steve Hendrickson of Sabre Airlines Solutions. Tom, to you first. What do you do? Uh, you know, it, it's... Uh the airline system today is running at a, a high peak, especially during the peak travel season here, the spring break travel period. There's very little wiggle room uh, for air, and when something like bad weather sets in, uh, it just puts everybody at chaos, and it takes a while to catch up. I, I remember last week when you, you know one of the things was to cancel flights ahead of time and not let people sit in that mess up there, and and yet when. Uh, JetBlue canceled 200 and some flights last Friday. Everybody challenged them. Why are you doing this? It's too early. It's this and that. And and yet they, these guys look like they're the smart guy for the week now. Because well, you know what's happening? You're right, Tom. What's happening, Steve, is all the other airlines are quickly following suit. I mean, if there's a forecast of drizzle, they all start canceling flights. Now, I'm being a little extreme here, but I wonder what the fallout is for regular flyers and what we can do. Well, you know, the, the bad news is... Could I go to Steve, North Tom? I will come back to you. But Steve, what do yeah. you think of that? What can we do? Well, one thing we can do is, is help airlines get equipped uh, with tools and techniques to respond to weather disruptions. Um, you know, as Tom mentioned, uh, there are scenarios that play out where the smart thing to do is to cancel ahead of time and get uh, crews and airplanes and gates positioned so that you can recover from the disruption. That's not always the right answer, but um, I think the best thing to do is to make sure that the airlines are able to evaluate all the alternative scenarios and then pick the best one and then uh, action that plan as quickly as possible. But you know what I have, Tom, a problem with the industry when these developments happen? I mean, weather happens, but, but right. um, I think some of them, and I'm not going to name names, they just lie to you. They, they say, all right, your flight's delayed 20 minutes or 30 minutes, and then they keep delaying it 20 or 30 minutes. Someone knows full well there is no chance in hell that flight's going to come in and take off. So just tell yeah. us there is no chance in hell your flight's going to come in and take off. Yeah, you know, we've heard all those horror stories. Even this last weekend, right. you know, people stuck on planes for nine hours again. Like, give me, you know, don't we understand that? Uh, and you know, a Congress is probably going to get a hold of this and say, you talk about this tarmac issue and two hours and three hours sitting out there at nine hours, uh, and they're going to do some 18-month study, even though they fly every week. My suggestion is that you know, since they're up in Washington, let's just put them out on a whole bunch of airplanes. Let's start the clock the little time clock and ask them how they feel after an hour on the plane then three hours up to six and then when they're killing each other maybe ten hours later on the plane maybe we'll see some resolution from the United States government yeah but I, I don't know if the solution is there Steve the bottom line is whether you're stuck in a plane for ten hours or at an airport terminal for ten hours you're still stuck there's got to yeah. be a better system than this madness that is increasingly common do we Look. create more runways do we we yes. show more vigilance during times like this what? Well, no, no look, the, the, air the traffic congressional interv Go ahead, Steve. Co congressional intervention isn't the answer. The airlines have plenty of vested interest in solving this problem. They don't want to disrupt the, the operation. It's hard on their revenues, it's hard on their costs, and it's hard on their customer experience. They want to solve this problem. It's just that in the central nervous system that most airlines call their systems ops control center, um, they're overwhelmed with a very large problem that happens all at once. And this, this is where you want to focus your, your resources if you're an airline, is bringing decision support tools so that you can make those snap decisions. What, what Tom uh, or, or you, Neil, described as, you know, you're, you're never going to know for sure if your flight's going to operate, is what I would characterize as creeping indecision. And, and the reason you have creeping indecision is that the problem keeps changing. Status keeps coming in from around the system as to which airplanes are where, crews stranded where, et cetera. And the airline is not able to optimize their recovery plan. All right. and, and that's really where Sabre's tools focus is, is trying to come okay. up with an optimal Well, they got to, guys, I don't mean to jump. We got to do something because for the flying public, it is a mess. Thank you both very much. Okay. Well, does young America see tax hikes as a